Hey guys, Dan Picard here with Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal and Hunting Journal and Beyond the Grid TV. Make sure you watch your Beyond the Grids. Got some awesome episodes out this year. But we're out here today, we're gonna do a pack dump. What do I carry in the woods? Uh, the elk woods in particular. So let's take a look. Okay, we have the F1 mainframe and attached to it today, we have the Vapor 2500 bag from Eberly Stock. Uh, once again, there's so many different options. This is a modular design, so you can attach bat wings. You could run with a satchel, like a, a top. Uh, I have that here as well. If I wanna go ultralight, I'll put my stuff in here, take the vapor bag off and put my uh, tripod, my spotter, and everything I need for the day in here. That's like if you're just skimping, running and gunning, uh, maybe it's a short hunt or an evening hunt. I want to go as light as possible. That's when I use the satchel. But for like a normal day hunt, if I'm truck hunting, uh, if I'm hunting out of a camp that has, you know, all my, my stuff back at camp, then I'll run this vapor pack. Um, maybe during late season, if it's colder, I need more clothes, I'll run the vapor pack. Um, but it just kind of depends. I like many different combinations. So first thing with this, F1 is you have the horizontal straps. There's three of them that keeps everything contained. And then we're into the bag. So this outer zipper, I like to put things in here that I, I want quick. Here's my uh, phone charger. Here's a, an elk call, my diaphragms. I got a few diaphragms in here. Uh, I might put my phone in here. Just stuff I need to access quickly. Maybe a granola bar. Open up the pack this I always have an extra shell depending on the the time of year of the hunt maybe it's early season I'll just bring a light piece of rain gear or a light jacket if it's later season I'll bring a puffy mid-season I'll bring a puffy or you know some sort of outer shell in addition to a puffy but I always have an extra jacket I like the puffies because they're so light and packable um, usually what I'll do is I'll wrap my spotting scope in my puffy and that's how i roll with it when i'm traveling through country just to protect it a little bit so i have my spotter and i always have a first aid kit uh, growing up uh, as a boy scout and i had some some hunters that i took back when i used to guide uh, they were surgeons and doctors and stuff and they really hooked me up and i made uh, this first aid kit you'll never know uh, what you're going to run into in the back country or in the front country out elk hunting but if you do injure yourself or you run across somebody that's injured you want to have everything that you you're going to need now i won't carry this every day if i'm doing a, a quick evening hunt or something or i'm close to camp i'm going to leave this at camp just to save weight but first aid kit's very important next i have game bags uh, these ovis sacks they're pretty cool they're really lightweight and they're they're very very compact like i just got done using this i mean you're gonna have to bone your elk out but that's like one of their standard meat sacks and i just like them because they're so compact once again I'm, I, I like to ounce count i like to cut weight where i can but i have four bags in here plus like a camp meat bag which for you know back straps tenderloins uh things of that nature just a little bit smaller so have those I have my smalls bag um, in this this is where i have my kill kit uh, my headlamp i've got this peaks headlamp i like it uh, i've got i always bring electrical tape that's always with me uh, i always bring a couple pairs of gloves i have two pairs of rubber gloves for cleaning um, i'm not really worried about disease or catching something from a deer or an elk but uh, I just like the, the cleanliness factor, especially if I'm in bear country. It's nice to be able to take these gloves off and have relatively clean hands uh, so I don't have to scrub fat and blood and stuff off your hands in the creek. And like fat from an elk or a deer, it really sticks to your hands and it takes a lot of scrubbing to get it off. So I always bring gloves. A lighter is always with me. Um, these things are a lifesaver, the potential to be a lifesaver. Uh, I like red needles for a fire starter. So anytime I'm hunting anywhere out west, for the most part, you're going to find red needles or red juniper boughs or something that's dead. But those red needles are are very flammable and probably my um, my favorite fire starter in the backcountry. Of course, 
the knife and an extra blade, um, the lighter the better. And then I'll bring a sharpener too, depending. Um, sometimes I bring a sharpener, sometimes I just bring an extra blade. I also have water purification tablets. Uh, I've used these quite a bit. It's just an iodine tablet with a neutralizer. Um, they're so lightweight and small, so I, that's what I like about them. The downside is, is you have to wait for 30 minutes before your water's purified. Um, you can also use uh, a SteriPen. You know, that UV light is handy too and nice and lightweight and compact, but I've completely gotten away from like pumps in the backcountry, too bulky. Um, I just rather not carry them. So uh, once again, there's inconveniences of these, but I've just, I've kind of used them and I've stuck to them and I've never gotten sick. And so I just always have these in my pack for whatever reason. Not for whatever reason, but you don't, you don't want to get GRD in the backcountry. Um, and depending on the weather, I have this Cryptek uh, backpack cover, just like a, a waterproof system. And I usually bring this too if the weather gets nasty and maybe the camera guy forgot his, then we wrap the camera in this to keep it dry. So um, yeah, just a simple backpack cover. Bag of food. Um, it varies what I take for food, but I have a Ziploc bag full of food that I bring with me uh, all the time. Um, nuts, granola bars, um, meal bars. These uh, Recon One MRE bars are good. A lot of calories uh, with 260 calories in this, and it weighs like nothing, so that's handy. Um, always have some candy, some Snickers, stuff like that. Um, more granola bars. I like to bring... Uh, you know, like salmon or tuna packets and have crackers for lunch, something like that. Kind of, uh, you know, lighter weight. It's not heavy food, but you're getting a lot of good quality nutrition. Uh, you're getting your protein, so that's handy. And then I have lots of nuts and seeds I bring. Uh, I like almonds. I bring those. But my favorite pound for pound, ounce for ounce food is roasted and salted uh, sunflower kernels. These are ready to eat. Uh, Tons of fat in these, good fat, 15 grams of fat, um, 180 calories in a quarter of a cup. That's like a mouthful. So, that right there, 180 calories. And this is energy that sticks with you for a long time. That's why I like it. You have carbohydrates, the fats, when you're up in the mountains burning that energy. This is huge. Gotta have my sunflower kernels. Now, that's about it. I wanna keep it nice and light. I keep my water on the outside. That's what I like about this vapor pack. It has pouches on the outside. So I keep my water in there. I might put, you know, a bigger bottle of water you know, inside the pack. Um, but I always have two bottles plus like a Gatorade or a Powerade. So this is like what I need for the day to not get dehydrated. If I'm doing an evening hunt, I'll just bring a quart, cruise out, and this is gonna keep me good for the evening. It also depends on what there is for water in the country that I'm in. If I'm deer hunting, I'm probably gonna bring more bottles with me because uh, there's less water in deer country, especially the high country. But for elk hunting, there's usually gonna be water around. Elk like water, it seems like. Where you find elk, you find water. So I might just bring one of these for the day and then I'll just uh, sterilize some water, you know, when I run low. It's always good to carry two though, because you can, purify one bottle and you still have other water to drink and so you can rotate off that's if you're using the pills so something to keep in mind there now the cool thing about this i have all my stuff in here p cord in here always bring parachute cord you never know when you'll need some cordage so i'm going to put everything back in and be sure to, you know to have a tripod as well for your spotting scope. When I'm, you know, getting digiscope footage or, and I'm setting the spotter up, I just borrow the, the tripod from the camera guy and I throw the spotter on this. So that just alleviates having to carry another tripod. And if you're backcountry hunting, 
you know, it comes in handy because this is a nice, sturdy, quality tripod, and I can get nice, solid digiscoping footage on this tripod. I do have a, a packable, small carbon tripod too that I'll bring if I'm ounce counting or we don't have a tripod for the day or whatever the case may be. It's in the truck, but I might not always bring it. But in reality, it's too small for this spotter, but it works if you need it in a pinch. So this is the tripod I use. And sometimes I carry it, sometimes the camera guy's carrying it, but it just spreads out the weight because this thing kind of is heavy. So those poor camera guys, they carry a lot of weight out there. So I like to help them out when I can carry their tripod for them. <laughs> okay, so get everything back, back in the vapor bag. Some water. The elk bugle, I'll throw this onto the outside, clip it on, have it somewhere on the outside where it's handy. I rarely put it in the bag uh, just because you want it accessible. That's the biggest reason. Um, so that stays on the outside. Okay, so this is why I like the mainframe. Say I just killed a bull and I wanna take a load of meat to camp that night. I don't wanna have a wasted trip or have you know a situation where I can't bring you know, meet out that night and save myself a trip the next day. So what makes the mainframe cool is the modular system. You just unzip the pack, you take the bag off. So the bag's independent, put that to the side. And then I can lay my hindquarter on here, buckle it in like that. and have my hindquarter buckled in. And then I can strap oops, strap my bag onto the outside of that and get a big load down to camp in one fell swoop. So, okay, so if I wanna run ultra light, I'll put everything in this satchel that I need for the day. And I, I find myself, I, I use the satchel quite a bit. You'll see in a lot of my episodes running this way. So I'm going to put a quart of water and this is for like an, an evening hunt. This isn't like a multi-day hunt. I'll leave this probably leave my first aid kit. Headlamp food bag. Game bags. Bring my extra jacket, I'll show you what I do with this. And lastly, my smalls bag with my knife. And if I have the room, I'll fit another bottle in, which usually you can fit another bottle in. So what I'll do here now is I have the satchel and I'll lay this across the top. And depending on if I'm carrying the tripod, I may or may not be, I'll wrap my spotter in my jacket and just bundle this up and then cinch it down onto the mainframe. You have that load shelf down here, it's not gonna slide around as long as you have that good strapage on there. You're gonna be in good shape, it's not gonna go anywhere. So I use one strap for the spotter down low, one strap for the satchel up top, and if I'm using, if I'm carrying the tripod with my spotter, I'll use this middle strap on the main frame. Oops, I gotta get it out of here now. I'll use the middle strap to come around the top I can attach my bugle, I can attach my bow if I want to, if I don't want to carry my bow, or whatever the case may be. And on days that I use this sort of pack, I might just like bring an outer shell, like a raincoat, and uh, in, in addition to the puffy, and that'll help keep my puffy waterproof if weather does come in. But that's my ultralight setup right there. And this weighs nothing. This is probably like 15 pounds. 
And so if you're running and gunning or you're making a quick day trip or you have plenty of water up there, like I'll probably, I could run with this all day. And I do that a fair amount. If I know I have water, I have my purification pills with me. I'll run like this all day and leave the heavy stuff at camp. Maybe I'll bring like a small portion of my first aid kit with me. Um, you know, some tape and band-aids and maybe some gauze and keep it very small. But this heavy stuff stays at camp. So, and that gives you the power to, to once again, you kill something, then you attach your meat to it. And then you got your game bags there and then you can strap, you know, this onto the outside. I'll even buckle this around the top quarter of an elk quarter, you know, the bone that's sticking out and strap it in tight and it'll suck it down and be tight right there. So pretty slick setup that way too. So hope that helped. There's my elk pack dump uh, for 2022. I feel like it changes so much. It depends on the season I'm hunting, whether it's early, mid or late and the species I'm hunting. But for elk, I always have the main frame with me.